Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I am standing in front of my Grace Kinique 21 Pro long arm and I have a Continuum 2 frame also from Grace. I am running the QCT5 software from Grace. One of the reasons I love having a long arm is the ability to add on a binding while I have the quilt on the long arm. You can do this one of two ways. You can quilt the entire quilt and then go back and add the binding afterwards or you can quilt like the first row and then add the binding on the top and down the sides a little bit and then go ahead and advance the quilt quilt the row and then add the binding on each side as you go down and work your way down and then when you get to the end of the quilt then you will finish your last pass of whatever pantograph you might be running or your quilting. Then you'll go ahead and bring in the binding at the end and leave a gap so that you can take it to the domestic machine and go ahead and finish off your, uh, your binding by putting that together and then stitching it on. And then of course you would finish it either by machine like I do or you can take it off and tack it on the back by hand. I also like the ability to be able to trim the quilt off of the long arm while it's still on the frame because the, the frame is providing tension to you so you can, when you get finished putting it on on the end, then you can just start on the sides with some big scissors and just go ahead and trim right up the sides. It makes your life so much easier when you're doing this. Now you can do this whether you have the 21 like I do, the Grace Canique 21. You could have a 19, you could have a 15. You can have the Cutie Frame, which is the portable one that actually can sit on a table and you quilt using your domestic sewing machine. You can also add on the binding on that. It's a, it's a really easy process. If you have a long arm, I highly encourage you to give this a try. Now you cannot do this with show quilts because your miters are gonna go different directions based on which direction your binding is coming down. And that'll make more sense once you start doing it. But the video I'm about to show you is me doing the binding on my quilt that is on our bed in the motorhome. Now what you're looking at in this video, I actually made this quilt customized for the motorhome. So the first 24 inches of the top of the quilt is actually about this much more narrow than the body of the quilt because there are nightstands right on either side of where the headboard is. And so I made the quilt more narrow where the nightstands are. So when you see the binding coming down the sides, you're gonna see stitching from the pantograph because I just went ahead and made the backing large enough for the whole nine yards. My quilting is in the on the backing and then it jumps over into the main part of the quilt. I know it's confusing, I'm sorry. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Anyway, so I just wanted to let you know, if you guys have a long arm and you haven't tried this process, give it a try. It's really simple. And with practice, you will be adding all your bindings on for non-show quilts when you're doing this method. And if you don't have a long arm yet, I highly encourage you to check out Grace Company's long arms. They are really top notch. They've come a long way and I absolutely love the quality that I've got on this long arm. I love the customer support and the frame is top of the line. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. If I don't see you again before I'm done, we will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye. I am getting ready to put the binding on a quilt that I just finished quilting on my new Grace Canique 21 Pro. I used the QCT5 Pro software. I did not use the gold package on it. I didn't need to do that because I just used the Power Panto mode, but I do have the gold package. And then I've got this quilt on the Continuum 2 frame. And I love having the Grace Luminous lights over the top of it. And look how bright and pretty it all is. And it's a real joy to work with this machine and this entire setup. 
One of the things I love to do when I am wanting to get my quilt just done, now this is to put the binding on while it's on the long arm. And you can do this process whether you've got the 10 foot, the 12 foot, a cutie tabletop frame, any one of these frames that Grace offers, you can do this process. It is so incredibly easy and it really gets your quilts and your production really rolling along. So what I'll do is I make a binding just like normal. I'll take my strips, two and a half inch strips, and iron them so that they are, if I iron it in half, wrong sides together, just like I would normally. And most of the time when I'm doing this process, I'll do it during the whole quilting, throughout the quilting process. So in a nutshell, the trick is make your binding as long as you normally would, and you want to then find the midway point in the big long strip. I put a uh, wonder clip on here and then I position it right here at center of the quilt. Now, this process is not for show quilts. I do not recommend it at all because your miters are gonna go different directions on your corners. This is a great option for utility quilts or gifts or I wouldn't recommend doing this for show quilts. It's not as precise but what it, what it is, is it's really good for production to just get your quilt done and move on and go play with more pretty fabric. That's what it's all about, right? So I'm going to take you through my process here and show you how to do this. I will start in the center and work my way down to the other end and then start in the center again and come this way. I've already pinned the binding to the quilt and I'll show you how I do my pins here up close in just a second. I put a pin at the quarter inch mark from the edge and I run it perpendicular to the binding so that I know where to stop. And then I will do the miter fold just like on a regular if you were doing it on a machine and then fold it down. Now this takes a little bit of practice to uh, run, the, uh, run the quarter inch seam along to put the binding on and get it straight. You can certainly use quilting rulers for that. The thicker quilting rulers are great if you want to put one on there and I don't even really need uh, a ruler table when I use that if I use it I don't need a ruler table because I'm working right at the base of the machine the whole time so the machine gives me um, I can put the ruler right at the foot and then just slowly work my way around this method is just so quick and easy and once you get the hang of it you'll be doing it all the time so let me show you how I do this as you can see I am not running the QCT5 software I just have my tablet up matter of fact I could just turn it off I don't need it on all I'm using now is the machine itself so I will be doing this entire process outside of the software and that's really a nice thing to be able to do that on these machines the main buttons I will be using on the machine are this button right here which is needle up down the big one on the left side is needle up needle down and it does the same as the screen needle up down I just prefer to use this if I can and then this is the go and stop button so those are the two buttons I will be using to needle up down to pull my bobbin thread and then stop and go right here I've got a wonder clip marking center approximately it doesn't have to be exact and then I have my quilt pins in down near the bottom of the edge of the binding I have the raw edge the raw folded raw edge against the raw edge of the quilt top and I've got these pinned down here so that they are out of the way of the foot while it moves up and down on the binding and then down here at the end a quarter of an inch away from the edge I have a pin marked a different direction and that one tells me where to stop so I'm gonna just get going on this and you're gonna see how incredibly quick this process is and it's really a lot of fun to have it be done like this. 
Okay, I'm going to remove this and just like normal, I'm going to start in the center. I've got the back of the foot on the edge of the fabric. So that puts my needle one quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to needle down, needle up, and move the machine and pull up my bobbin thread. And then I'm going to put my bobbin threads out to the side and I'm just going to take three quick little stitches back and forth. I'm just moving it like one stitch width and that just kind of anchors that. And now I'm just going to press go and I'm going to keep my hand back here, keep it taut as it travels through and I'll take the pins out when I'm done. This is so much better than wrangling this quilt at a traditional sewing machine. I've gotten to the pin. I'll tell it to stop. And then I'll pull it away and pull it back. And get my bobbin thread up. Needle down, needle up. and trim my threads. Here at the corner, I'm gonna pull my pin and just like doing it on a domestic machine, I'm gonna make that flat so that we have a straight going up this direction right here, a straight edge to make sure I get the miter correct in the corner and then Place my ruler so that I get that nice 90 degree and fold it over. Okay, and then pull that out there. And I'm going to take the pin again and pin it in place. Just like this. And this is what I mean about not being able to put this in a show because your miter is going to go the different direction. So then I just, I start it a little bit away from the edge because I'm going to go backwards and then forwards. So, needle down, needle up, pull it, get my bobbin thread. You can go as fast or as slow as you're comfortable with. And I'm just keeping the edge of the foot even with the edge of the fabric. Look at how fast this is. I've already got this side almost done. Okay, I've gone as far as I can, so I'm going to tell it stop, push it away, Pull it back up. There we go. And now I'm going to go over to center and do the other side. Okay, get here to the end. Stop it. So I do normally do this during the quilting process itself. I will go ahead and quilt the first row with the long arm, you know, doing a regular pantograph, and then put the binding on the top. And when you go to advance your quilt, you just kind of have to keep in mind that as you come down the side, the first row may want to stitch where you have already come down and done the binding. So all you have to do is only stitch the binding down to where the next row is not going to catch the edge of that binding. I'm going to pull all these pins out now. That way you can do your pantograph quilting and your binding all in one shot. I'm going to put this up and make sure I've got a 90 there. It looks good. Pull that down over it.
And when I get to the end, as far as down as I can go, then what I'll do is I'll come off directly into the batting, stop the machine, pull my thread up, I don't even really lock it um, because it's gone a different direction, so it's not going to come undone. Okay, and now it's time to move the machine forward. You do want to make sure that your tail doesn't get caught up underneath when you're rolling the quilt. You can fold your binding out to the side, and that will give you an idea of how far you need to roll it. There. Okay. Now I'm going to do this side first because the head of the machine is over here. Look at how easy this is. Just pulling it straight down toward you. I usually start about three or four stitches into the previous stitching just to kind of lock them in. I'm going to continue to do this, putting it down on the sides and rolling and keep going until the whole quilt is down to the bottom and then I'll leave about an opening about that big so that I can go ahead and make a, a diagonal seam miter binding where the ends join. All right, you guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was a lot of fun and uh, give it a try. I think you'll like it. It's really a very cool way to get a binding on your quilt. And if you can figure out how to get it all done at one time, that's awesome. You know, then you've got uh, more time to go quilt. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.